Well, hey, everybody. It's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we're walking through the Bible in a year. Today is December 22nd, and there are only three more days left till Christmas. I hope that you are getting ready. I got up very early this morning to tape this for you so we could talk about today a present joy. We're studying the book of 1 Peter, and I wanted to let you know that the word Peter, the name Peter, is actually Greek. It's a Greek translation of the Aramaic word Cephas, C-E-P-H-A-S. That's the name that Jesus gave to Simon when he was called to be a disciple. So we are actually looking at the Greek translation of that name. Now the present joy is what I've entitled the lesson today. Uh, in 1 Peter he talks about a number of different things and we're going to touch very lightly on them today. But what is the present joy that he speaks of? What is the present joy that encompasses Christmas and what is this present joy that we're to carry with us not only at the Christmas season but all throughout the year well the present joy is knowing that you and I have a wonderful inheritance waiting for us it's a salvation that cannot under any circumstances be lost and Peter tells us that because we have this wonderful gift, we as Christians should respond. We have a responsibility to respond in a certain way, and that is a living out of our faith. You see, faith turns sound doctrine into sound practice. So how are you doing today living out your faith? Is your faith alive and active? As people look at your life, can they see your faith? being acted out right before them. You see, our joy, this present joy, should be independent of our circumstances. And I know that's hard to say sometimes because some of you are going through very, very difficult circumstances and it's very difficult to be joyful. Now that's not the same as being happy. We don't have to be happy during difficult times. But joy is something deeper. Joy is something that can't be explained. Joy is a peace in the midst of a storm. Joy is a feeling inside of us that is a calm. It's an assurance. It's a knowing. A knowing through faith that God is in control of those circumstances and is carrying us literally in the palm of his hand. That's why joy is so different from happiness. Happiness is fleeting, but joy is never ending. Joy can only come through the Holy Spirit, where happiness can be seen in the world. We can be happy in our flesh, but joy is something that is a spirit gift. It is something that we experience as we experience more of the Holy Spirit. Now, yesterday, Peter gives two commands in 1 Peter 1, 13 and 16, which pretty much sums up this whole section. He says, have hope, right? Have hope. Hope is the assurance of things not yet seen. And he says, be holy which is a very important aspect of the Christian walk. It's our sanctification process. It is our growing to be more like Jesus Christ each and every day. You know, when Christians are baptized, some people think, oh, great, you know, I've got to get out of jail free card. I'm in the community of faith. I'm going to get to heaven. There's no more work for me to do here. Well, if that were true, I heard someone say, a Sunday school teacher of mine once say that we should just shoot them after baptism. That way they could never backslide. That way everything would be, would be great. Well, the reason we don't do that is because there is a process of sanctification that we are responsible for from the time of our baptism to the time we die. And that is cooperating with the Holy Spirit in becoming more like Jesus Christ. How are you doing exhibiting the fruits of the Spirit? How are you doing each and every day getting up and maybe the first thing that you could think or say to the Lord in the morning, even before you get out of bed, is Lord, let your Spirit live in me greater in me today than yesterday. Let your spirit live in me. Teach me how to walk in the spirit. You know, Galatians 5.16 tells us to live continually 
in and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we begin today, some of, some of that was in the reading from yesterday, and I recognize that. We really begin the reading today in our one-year Bible with Peter talking about living stones, and that's a really neat picture of the Christian walk. You know, you and I are living stones. We are living testimonies to the glory of God today in our world. And Peter says, you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. If you, when you, I'll say when, when you're able to go to Israel, you'll see a portion of the wall where the original temple stood, the second temple of Solomon, and the stones are huge. I mean, they're almost as big as I am. And they're just they're just huge, huge stones. And there is a cornerstone that's the most important upon the, uh, the, you know, the whole foundation rests. And of course, in scripture, the cornerstone is Jesus Christ. But all those other stones that make up the temple are very important too. And um, we, are, we are told today that we are the living stones that make up the spirit temple. You know, Paul talks about us being um, a spirit temple. He calls the church that, and he calls the church a dwelling. And he's not referring to the physical brick and mortar that our churches are today, but we, we are the church because the Holy Spirit lives in, inside of us. And that is a very special gift. You know, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon individuals only certain individuals for only a specific period of time. You know, the Holy Spirit came on um, certain individuals, artisans, artists to build the tabernacle. Remember when we studied that back at the beginning of the year? And there were other times, you know, David said, do not take your spirit from me. So certainly when he was writing the Psalms prophetically, there would be times where the Holy Spirit was residing in him. But that's the difference. One of the main, one of the many differences between the Old and New Testaments then and now is that now the Holy Spirit resides in us and He doesn't leave. Now we can feel more or less of the Holy Spirit during certain uh, periods of time, and a lot of that has to do with how we are abiding in Christ, how we are faithful to our Bible study and our devotion time. Um, but He's still there with us. While we may, he may manifest his presence uh, stronger at certain times than others. He's he's not ever going to leave us, and that is the that's one of the wonderful gifts of the New Testament. So you are as part of these living stones. You are part of a royal priesthood, and that carries with it a responsibility uh, in today's world to be a light and to spread the truth to people in the dark world today. Now, there are many people in the dark world that simply don't believe. And in 1 Peter 2, 8, he gives us some reasons why there are many people who simply don't believe. And it says that they get tripped up on the cornerstone. And who's the cornerstone? Well, that's Jesus. The second thing 1 Peter tells us is that they do not obey the word. You can check that out in 1 Peter 2, 8. And that's very true of our world today. There are many people who simply are falling away from they're, they're falling away from God's law because they're not staying in the Word. They don't understand the truth, and they're simply being deceived. So, if, as we wrap up today's lesson and the reading in First Peter, Peter tells us as Christians to do these three things: first, to take a stand against sin; second, to submit to lawful authority; and third, to endure harsh treatment patiently. So as we enter the Christmas season, we've got three more days to go before Christmas. Let's try to maintain a heart filled with these three reminders that can be summed up in joy, hope, and peace. And of course, Paul tells us that the greatest of these is love. And we exhibit love through um, the kindness we show to others, and of course, the love that we have for our God himself. Well, I pray this is a blessed Christmas season for you and that you've been blessed by this lesson. I pray that you are able to carry your present joy and uh, I'm, that you would carry your present joy through this very, very busy time, remembering that your salvation cannot be taken from you for it is a sure thing waiting for you in heaven. Well, blessings to you. Enjoy your day. Shalom.